Hi, I'm Tim. And on behalf of the entire Apollo family, I'm super excited that you've chosen us for your RV experience. I'm about to share with you all the tips and tricks on operating your RV. So your two best friends on your travels will be your Apollo Connect app and the how-to guide. With the Apollo Connect app, you can find local points of interest, get prepared for your road trip with our safe drive and how-to videos, and with our friends at Campstay, find and book campgrounds and holiday parks. Your second best friend will be the how-to guide. The how-to guide contains all the relevant instructions on the features of your chosen RV. First of all, we'll quickly run through the symbols used throughout the how-to guide. No driving during procedure. This symbol indicates that the procedure cannot be completed whilst the vehicle is in motion. Requires electricity. This symbol indicates that the procedure is only available when you're connected to 240 mains power at a campground. Requires gas. This symbol indicates the procedure functions with LPG from the gas bottle. Requires battery. This symbol indicates the 12 volt battery system is required for the operation. Use dump station. This symbol indicates the procedure should only be performed at a registered dump station. You've got a bunch of keys with your six berth. A vehicle remote, you've got a compartment key and a fresh water key. Main door keys, the smaller round one is for the door lock and the larger square one is the deadbolt. We recommend you just use the deadbolt to lock the door. Alright guys, so that's your keys. Just remember, don't separate the keys, don't leave the keys in the ignition and have the keys on you at all times. Alright guys, now I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the outside of your vehicle. So first up we've got our toilet uh, access point here. This is where you'll slide the cassette out when you want to empty the cassette. This is the city water inlet. We don't recommend you use it, so don't worry about that. This is where you're gonna plug in your camper overnight at a campground. This is the hot water system exhaust, and it gets very hot when the hot water system's in action. So make sure that there's nothing covering that. All right, guys, you've got a massive storage compartment here. We recommend you use this storage compartment to only store the outdoor table and chairs. You'll also find the power cable and the gray water hose here. Okay, so down here we've got our grey water valve outlet. This is where you'll empty the grey water tank. Alright guys, we're on the passenger side now of your RV. We've got the tunnel boot storage compartment here, continues on from the other side. We've got our freshwater inlet here. This is where you'll refill your freshwater tank. Your RV has two LPG bottles and they're stored in this compartment here. We've got the vents for the fridge here. Just make sure nothing's blocking that because they do get a little bit hot. We've just got more storage down here. And lastly, we've got the main door to the cabin. Just use the uh, exterior step for easy access. All right, guys, and finally on this side, I just wanted to point out where you're gonna fill up your fuel. It's just here. All you need to do is just open the door and access the fuel cap. So that's a super quick overview of the outside of your RV. Now we're gonna get into the details with our how-to guide. All right guys, connecting your RV to the campground power. First you'll need your extension lead, which will be back here. Insert this into our RV, just making sure that you get a really nice connection with the large earth pin at the bottom. Insert the lead into the campsite and turn on. All paid campgrounds will have 15 amp outlets with the large earth pin. Make sure the circuit breaker is in the on position. Turn off all appliances prior to disconnecting from the power inlet. Disconnect and store the lead before moving your RV. The grey water is water collected from the shower and the sink. Check the level of the grey water tank regularly by pushing the test button. Once full, or every two days, you'll need to empty the tank, retrieve the grey water hose from the compartment and connect to the grey water outlet. Close the two locking pins for a firm connection. When the other end is in the dump point, open the valve. If you're planning to stay at the campground for an extended period, you can just leave the grey water hose connected with the valve open. When you're ready to move on, close the valve and pack away the grey water hose. Your RV has a fresh water tank that supplies water to the shower, toilet and sink. We don't recommend you drink this water. We recommend you boil the water if you want to drink it. Check the level of the freshwater tank at the control panel. 
When you're getting close to empty, or every two days, just simply refill at the water inlet over here. First, you'll need your hose, and using the fresh water key, just open the lock. And when you insert the hose, just make sure the hose is in all the way. Connect the hose to the tap using the adapter provided. Once the tank is full, disconnect the hose, remembering to take the adapter with you. The RV comes with two gas bottles that supply LPG to the stove, oven, three-way fridge and hot water system. The vehicle must be on level ground for the system to work. When you need LPG, just remember to turn the valve on all the way. Once you've finished cooking or heating water, just make sure you turn the gas off at the bottle. The awning is a sunshade only. It's not to be used in windy or rainy conditions. To operate, firstly get the awning winder arm from the rear compartment. Insert the winder arm and turn until you can reach the awning. Release the leg by pulling it toward the knuckle, swinging it around and twist 90 degrees, enabling you to tilt the leg down toward the catches on the RV. Slide the lock down and extend the legs to the desired height and lock off. And of course pack up the awning before you move the vehicle. Just be aware, once the awning has been retracted, please don't wind any more as you may cause damage. Your fridge operates using a choice of three sources of power. 12 volt battery, 240 volt mains power, and LPG. When the AES button is on, the fridge will automatically switch between the power sources. It will always use 240 volt mains power when connected. If you're not connected, the fridge will try and use LPG. When driving, your fridge will work off the RV's engine battery. Once you've stopped driving, you'll need to either plug into power or turn the gas on at the bottle to keep the fridge cool. Simply turn on the main control panel and set to the desired temperature. We recommend you use the setting number 4. The lights will work off the 12 volt system, but just remember to turn them off when you're not using them or you will drain the battery. Simply turn on and off at the main control panel and also at each individual light. Your kitchen is equipped with a gas oven and a stove. The stove has two gas burners and an electric hot plate. You must have the range hood on in order to light the stove. To use the gas burners, push and rotate the dial and hold, and push the ignite switch until the gas lights. Continue to hold the dial to ensure the gas stays lit. It's recommended whenever you're using gas inside to open a window to allow for decent ventilation. Once you've finished cooking, Wait a while until the stove has cooled down enough before lowering the lid. Your RV has a hot water system that is powered by the LPG and ignited with the 12 volt system. This provides hot water to the shower and the tap at the sink. To start the process, turn on the LPG at the bottle. Turn on the water heater 12 volt switch and select 60 degrees on the boiler. Wait at least 30 minutes for the water to heat. If you see a red light on the boiler, the gas has failed to light the system. Wait one minute and start the process again. Once heated, the water can be used by turning on the 12 volt water pump switch. The air conditioner will only work when the RV is connected to mains power. Once connected, use the remote to turn on. Very importantly, turn off the aircon unit with the remote before disconnecting from mains power, otherwise you could blow a fuse. The microwave only operates on mains power. We recommend you stow the microwave plate away before travelling. The cutlery drawer is a handy spot for the plate. The power points allow you to use your 240 volt appliances. These only work when connected to mains power at a campground. The middle dinette converts into a bed. Simply lower the tabletop between the seats and arrange the cushions on top. Slide out the bed extensions and add the long cushion you'll find in the overcab bed. 
and you're ready for a great night's sleep. The spacious overcab bed accommodates two adults. For safe, easy access, you'll use the ladder provided. Please be aware the ladder has a weight limit of 100 kilograms. Make sure the ladder is securely attached here before putting your weight on it. Under the mattress, you'll find a cargo net that you can clip to the roof. It's to be used to store luggage when traveling only. The toilet in your RV uses water from the freshwater tank and the 12 volt system to flush. Turn on the toilet and water pump switches before using the toilet. Open the toilet lever. Press the button to flush. Once finished, close the lever. The waste is collected in a cassette. Very importantly, the toilet lever will need to be shut before the toilet cassette can be pulled out. When you're emptying your toilet cassette, please use a registered dump station just like this one. Unscrew the cap and empty the cassette. When your cassette's empty, just use the hose to give it a nice flush out and you're good to go. Once cleaned, return it back to its compartment and add one toilet chemical with one cup of water to charge the toilet cassette. Once you've finished your holiday, return the RV and leave the toilet cassette clean and completely empty. Alright guys, that's it from me. Don't forget, your two best friends are going to be your how-to guide and the Apollo Connect app. We wish you all the best on your trip and we'll see you next time.